I think we'll start this out with an example. You the hill we're changing. You're going to have a pass. Oh, I'm a bit loud. Oh, you grab by the function. Oh, yeah, I right. mean, we we're, uh, <laughs> we're funny, but not always a no. can't believe you've made it this far, but since you have, then we might as well talk about a completely different topic that we haven't talked about so far, unless it was in a Penny Packers Petting video. So uh, the trick is to stretch this one out to make it a little bit more informative than a Penny Packers Petting. Um, but uh, you're probably wondering what it is that we're talking about. It's an ABAB design. Um, you know, they're, they're really popular. They're, I mean, they've been in the field forever. In fact, you could argue that our entire field is based on ABAB designs. And for those of you that don't know what an ABAB design is, it's an ABAB, -A -A -B. <laughs> right? So um, it's just easier. I get confused with letters, so just saying it as a word is much more fun. Um, and now I can imagine going to ABAI and hearing people like, look, I have an ABAB design. Um, so <laughs> the first person that does that at ABAI, when I'm in the audience, is going to get a very big reinforcer. It won't be money because I'm broke, but it'll be something else. Probably just a clap, I suppose. I might even stand up and ovate you. Um, <laughs> is that a word? Ovating? Um, anyway. <laughs> I, I guess it's a word. Whatever. Um, so, ABAB designs, ABABs, right? Um, pretty straightforward, as you might imagine. It's really a, re a repetition of two designs, an AB and an AB. Or it's an ABA, or it's an ABA design with an extra A, B, I mean a B. So we could get really confusing here. But really what we have with an AB, AB design, um, and I'm calling it that because I'm not going to get into the withdrawal versus um, reversal issue here yet. Um, I will come back to that, but... Um, so AB, AB really is two designs. AB, well, one design repeated. AB and an AB. And you repeat it. Why? Replicability, of course, because an AB design by itself completely stinks and you can't draw any flipping conclusions at all. And in fact, what we call an AB design, bah, basically it's just known as a case study. Um, so but when we put two of them together, um, you start to get some cool things. Why is that? Well, because of the logic of the single subject baseline. And as we just looked up on our channel, we've got about 14 minutes of discussion on single subject logic um, and stability and baselines. So we don't need to worry about that here but so you get your nice stable baseline and then you implement an intervention right and then you get so we do it over here I guess so you, you get your baseline and you get an intervention right um, and hopefully behavior changes well we're not completely sure if the intervention is the um, uh, is the is what's causing the change now because of all sorts of concomitant or confound or um, whatever variables you want to call them um, that's popping into play so we reverse it oh gosh we withdraw the intervention um, to see what happens to the behavior and ideally the behavior changes right at the same time that these intervention phases change, right? Um, but in reality, it doesn't always change that quick. There are some transition phases in here, which is why we wait till stability. And then we put that intervention back in place. So we do our A, B, and we go, wow, we got results. And we do another A, it's like, hey, it's working. Um, the behavior is going down or going up, whatever the whatever it is that was happening. Um, and then you put your intervention back in place. As long as those things happen all at the same time, like as they seem to be related uh, to the phase changes, then we draw the conclusions that these things work. Right, um, that it is a strong, uh, or it has high levels of indi uh, uh, independent. My gosh, my internal validity. Sorry. So it seems like these have high levels of internal validity if you do things correctly and if you see those particular effects at the time that you make the changes. Is it perfect? Mm -mm, no, not at all. Like I said, those phase changes create transition um, points, and those transitions can be difficult to interpret. So you need to make sure that you're attending to the, the data itself and allowing it to stabilize right before you start switching conditions. I can't tell you how, how important that is, uh, because it, I'm, well, I can tell you how important it is. It, 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 it is the key of all of it, is the stability, right? Um, which I know you're probably wondering, how about the predictability and the verification and, and replication and all that fun stuff? Well, baseline, you figure it out, it establishes something that you can then predict from, um, and then you make your changes accordingly, and then of course you get your replicability built into the ABAB design. So it's pretty cool, right? So a couple other things about this. Um, various texts go into different types of ABAB designs using different types of procedures to switch between, right? I'm not a big fan of detail of getting into that nuance. Why? Because once you understand the logic, then you don't have to pigeonhole yourself with a particular type of intervention to do for your withdrawal. You can do, sure you can do an NCR, sure you can do a DRO, sure you can do a DRA, DRI, sure you can do punishment, sure you can do extinction, you can do all of these different things. So don't limit yourself by just what's written down in the textbook. Understand that it's the logic of the ABAB design that is important. 
That's what leads you to the high internal flow rating. Now, as I promised, I was going to come back to this withdrawal versus literature. Withdrawal versus literature. Whatever. So, <laughs> I'm having withdrawals from literature. Oh my gosh, bring me the books now. Um, so, no, um, withdrawal versus um, reversal issue. So, I think, to be completely honest with you, because I've been very saliently corrected on this in the past, um, that a vast majority of the ABAB designs that we run into or run these days are really going to be called withdrawal designs. They are probably not reversal designs. Traditionally, reversal designs have been referred to as designs where you're literally trying to reverse a behavior, choosing a different behavior to work with, right? So a DRO, DRI, DR, or a DRI type situation. Uh, so unless you're really reversing something, then, then please just call it a withdrawal design. If you're removing a treatment from it, you're just withdrawing that treatment. And thank you, Ron and Nancy Martella, for abundantly correcting me in front of all of my peers and colleagues one day. It was... I I joke about it, but it was true. I, I went for a long time believing that they were exactly the same thing. But um, And like many people in the field, we just call them reversal designs. And it's taken a long time for me to fix that particular behavior. So please, yes, do focus them on withdrawal designs. And don't worry too much about all the little details of the different ways that you can pull them off. Because it's really about stability and baseline. Switch to an intervention. Um, wait for stability. Switch back to your baseline. Wait for stability. And then go back to your intervention. Wait for stability. What are some of the limitations, right? Um, we're going to go over one really important one here really quickly um, which is a permanent behavior if you teach a permanent skill you're probably not going to be able to withdraw it it's really like you can't okay i can't teach i, I can't if i once i teach you to juggle i can't teach you to unjuggle right um it's just not going to work so things like permanent behavior changes that we're not going to do those and we're not going to use a b a b designs in order to analyze or, or to, in order to study those um the other thing that pops into play is is ethics right um so if we end up with self-injurious type situations we have to worry about those going back to baseline things and allowing baseline to stabilize and all that so you guys are already aware of that i'm sure you've read all the textbooks and all the articles on on uh, on ethics so please be aware of that um, but they are hands down pretty much the most powerful design type that you can come across i've often argued that they are have the most internal validity of all the designs out there both for single subject and for group research so there you go enjoy your your withdrawal designs i almost call them a reversal um enjoy your withdra withdrawal designs and interpret them with vigor <laughs> like subscribe share